Hello everybody and welcome back to another dark and darker video. Today I am going to kill the ruins golem and I'm going to kill the worm in the same run through on ruins and see if we make some good money. And right here, I got one of the furthest away spawns. I am in the top right corner, but you can just run past all of the mobs. You can do this from any spawn in the game and just run straight over to the middle, which is what I'm going to do first. And really, you can do whichever one you like first, but I am going to do the worm first here because I am just a bit closer to it. So let's go ahead and hit that. There is also a 50% chance that the worm is replaced with another golem from what I understand, although I haven't personally seen it, which is quite unlucky because I've done a good 10 of these runs and I just haven't seen it yet. And so yeah, these are both mini bosses. These do not count as full bosses. They are not like the cave troll or the lich or ghost king or skeleton warlord. These are sub bosses, so these technically count like a skeleton guardian or the little centipede in goblin caves. But based on their health, you would think they're a little bit higher tier than that, but they just aren't. And right here, I just barely dodged getting hit there. Warlock's interaction speed is not that high, and I've been having some fun playing Warlock recently. And I think I'll probably be maining Warlock this wipe through, just because I like doing that Inferno strategy, and Warlock is incredibly good at it now. I also think Warlock is probably a little bit towards the stronger side as far as the classes go right now. People seem to think he is weak, and that just couldn't be further from the truth. They're just using him wrong. And right here, I'm just gonna slap this thing, and because the attack speed is so slow on the staff, I oftentimes will be far enough away from it that it will dig again. And there is some skill to this, to making certain it doesn't dig, and I'm just not that used to slapping it with a magic staff, but I am just going in here with absolutely zero gear and smacking this thing. And really, the gear that makes a difference for me with Warlock is a weapon, a spell book, and magical healing items. Past that, it really doesn't make all that much of a difference for me. And the magical healing items are in limited stock, and I've been playing a lot, and you don't always get magical healing items every restock. I'm just slapping it a whole bunch here. And it does have about the same health as like a skeleton guardian does. So, not a very big deal to kill this thing. My DPS just isn't that high right now, and I should be using Blow of Corruption, but I'm not. I'm just forgetting to. And that's because I'm very focused on getting my two hits in per cycle, so it doesn't keep digging, and I'm getting the hang of it as I go further on here. And a lot of these runs are dead before they even begin. Like, you run into PvP so quickly on the Ruins map. Playing mace with terrible stats, and it's a green. Okay, that's worth about zero. Nothing. Not even worth selling. I pick up a silver coin, and I hovered over a ring of resolve there, so I'm trying to find that. There it is. And its stats aren't the worst ever, but it's a pretty bad ring. It wouldn't even go for 50 gold. And right here, there's poison on those chests, and I can't loot the gold chest because I don't have lockpicks, so I am out of here. There is also a gold ore in the corner here. If you're wondering how you get the gold ore for the crafting of items, then you have to go on ruins, and there is some in the cave systems beneath ruins, and there are in a couple of other spots as well, but it is exclusive to the ruins map. And this is where the other spawn is. This is where the golem spawns. It is where the rusty key used to be, if you know where that is. It's just right in front of the door there. And once again, these are sub-bosses, but these things have so much health. Especially the Golem. I thought the Golem would be a little bit, you know, easier in terms of health, but that thing has so much HP. And right here, I'm just going to spam Hellfire at it, because if I don't spam Hellfire at it, the zone will kill me before I kill it. You could go ahead and melee it. It does have a fairly easy-to-dodge attack pattern, but I have to hit it with Hellfire here, or else it is not going to go down quick enough. Honestly, it feels like it takes as many Hellfires as killing the Lich does, which is just ridiculous for a sub-boss. And I'm killing the mummies at the same time. You don't really have enough time to clear out these rooms beforehand, so I just go ahead and engage immediately and hit them all with the Hellfire. It works out just fine. The Golem is really slow, so it's quite easy to just kite around like this and just spam. 
And I'm trying to hit it back there with Curse of Pain, and I succeed, because I want to keep healing, and if I kill these mummies, I'm not going to keep healing off of them. Now, they also fixed the perk that makes it so that these casts last 30% longer, and that is super good, because that means you get more health per cast, and so I'm using that perk now. Before, it was making it so Curse of Pain and Power of Sacrifice did little to no damage, and that is just not workable. It wasn't worth using, but now that they have uh, changed that, it is definitely worth using, and this is the strategy for killing the Golem. You just run around in the circle, and you just cast Hellfire on it over and over. And then I like to get Curse of Pain and Curse of Sacrifice on it uh, as well. Power of Sacrifice, I should say. That way I'm healing at least. I don't have any items I brought in on me, by the way. So I have no magic healing on. And this is just complete base kit. And those also do some fairly decent damage. So it's not like they're doing nothing. And on top of that, they're healing. And Hellfire will just absolutely tank your health. So you need to be doing something to keep your health up. Also, now that they have the 30% perk working again, you don't actually need gear for killing Lich anymore. You used to kind of need magical healing. There was a bit of an RNG aspect to it where you could just get blue circles and you might not have needed any magic healing. But now you can just absolutely do it without. You would have to play extremely well with no magic healing. I would generally recommend at least one still because that's doubling your magic healing but it should be fairly easy. And high rollers should be doable on just one magic healing as well. I think it technically should be doable with no magic healing, but I haven't even gotten a high roller lich kill solo yet. So I'll let you guys know when I do and show it off. And if I find a method to do it with no gear, I'll let you guys know. And I get two chest pieces there, and they both don't really have much on them. And there's players at the top of these stairs, and these stairs are the only thing within the zone. So I am forced to go in this direction or go up the stairs on the other side, which would also bring me in this direction because this is the way the zone is. And these guys are clueless. Those guys absolutely can hear me at that range, and there should be no reason why they aren't attacking me here. But this is just the way that it is. These guys are Timmy Squad 6 right here. And I come over here, and then this ranger tries to shoot at me. Fun! So I jump off, and I'm going to go to the stairs on the other side. And I'll blood bag off of the skeleton over here, at least. You can stay in the zone for quite a while as Warlock. That doesn't mean you want to, because this is quite a risky maneuver I'm doing here. But it's less risky than running into two people as a solo with half your health left. And I'm pretty much being forced to go over the bridge here. I could go all the way around... But the zone does start to do more damage eventually, and I don't know if there are still mobs left over there. There sure might be, but it could be cleared out as well. Ruins at this point has the most players out of any map, and because it has duos, it also has the most groups out of any map. And it's quite easy to see people as well, so this map is super hard to avoid PvP on. And I'm just trying to wait for this health shrine here. And it is not happening. I think these guys just took it before they walked over there. And now they're over to the north of me. With the way these guys are acting, it's like they have their headphones on backwards. They don't really want to push a solo for whatever reason. And those guys didn't even notice I was going after them until I was about four feet away from them. Which is good for me, but this is the reason why there's such a big disconnect between casual players and like the high roller players. Because the high roller players have some really good headphones on. They'll hear you from two miles away and they will run over immediately at you and attack you with the force of a thousand suns. Actually makes the game really unfun. And you just get rolled. But these guys actually had a chance to run past, which I'm thankful for. And over there, there's someone opening up a portal and I'm kind of forced to go that way because over to the west here, there is those guys who tried to attack me earlier. And I only have like half a health bar again, and I know these guys have an open portal, so I am going to run after it. There it is. Let's go get it. And there's a rogue invis on my left. I saw him go invis. I know he's there. And he misses like three shots on me before he hits me, but I had no health going into that. And I lose all the gear. So is this a good money-making method? No, absolutely not. I tried to do a good 15 of these runs before I even got this one. The PvP is so dense on this map, and Ruins is absolutely not worth playing as a solo, and I don't think it's worth playing as a duo. There's way too many players and not enough loot. I would not recommend it right now. That said, if you guys liked this video, subscribe for more.